terrifying, right? I mean, literally, dude, I know we're all out here getting absolutely pounded by the waves of reality. I mean, everybody is experiencing some sort of extreme challenges, right? Obviously, that could go with your market money situations and things like this or all numbers of things. But isn't that crazy that we're all feeling this like really, really intense reality just pounding in deeper and deeper the pressure just like mounting right but never lose sight of the prophecy never lose sight of the promise and find all the reasons why the prophecy is inevitable right so today we're going to take a look at the nasdaq and talk about the story of the nasdaq so here you go dude officially the nasdaq goes back to 1971 officially on the old official right the official but it actually became an international trading exchange only in the 90s right about here right at the end of the 90s where uh people were trading it all over the world basically you know um so look at that oh great it popped like a freaking bubble when that happened right oh let's like lull in all the sheep straight up to the top right and they made a bunch of money unless they didn't lost it all right here you know what i'm saying all right, anyway, so just to give a basic psychological context, right? So that's the whole life cycle, but let's look at the chart and see just a few different things that point out right there, you know, like right out of the gate. Maybe, for example, let's look at the wave pattern, obviously, right? I mean, come on, freaking obviously? Is this complicated? Am I wrong? Am I freaking wrong? <laughs> you know what I'm about to tell you, dude. You know what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> right uh oh <laughs> maybe maybe but exactly dude exactly so that is a real basic i mean that's the i mean i already told you the story that's basically the basic story here but we can get a little bit more context just doing some fibs because this is your first major correction right the wave two correction is your first major correction. I know you don't like to look at that. That scares you even more, right? That does. Because that um, implies that, yeah, you may have just put a top in at the 4.236 extension, and now you got to do a big old wave four here. That could be, you know, the implication that I'm making if I'm being so basic and I'm being so objective. I mean, jeez. Yeah, right? I literally, in down to the 702, right? I mean, that's, whew, that is one way we could play this. But really, the biggest good news that I would point out is that, yeah, yep, we have a, an extreme, extremely good argument for a wave five coming in here. Do we think this five wave pattern is going to not happen? No, I would think it's, more likely than ever to happen because of how deep we are into the trend. We're at the top of a wave three right here, right? But this does imply like a whole bunch of downside, you know, potentially on the most macronomic objective level that I can possibly muster. And of course, it's eerily, you know, perfect that we line up to the 4.236 extension on the top of this wave three. Now, I'm going to soften the blow of that wave four impact with a few other angles because it would be foolish to just assume that's the only option the way that this can go this clearly was a wave one this clearly was a wave two this clearly is a wave three but is the story of this wave three over yet and we're just going to go straight into a wave four correction well not necessarily because there's this way of looking at it and why is this even relevant period why is this even relevant well few reasons it's relevant is mainly because of how it's applied to other stocks mega cap stocks in this you know bull market in that bull market i'm referring to you know basically this whole thing is a bull market when is this ever a bear market if you're looking on the macro level yeah it has some nasty corrections but those corrections are actually pretty small compared to how much money you made if you just held nasdaq for four decades you know <laughs> you made kind of a pretty good a pretty lot of money so let's just look at some of the other stocks traded on the nasdaq to see if we can make an argument for this fibonacci measurement right and the obvious jumper outer is obviously apple that's the the obvious one 
where you're going to want to make a measurement, right? Look at this year, right? This is the top of the tech bubble, right? Apple tops out at 133, crashes down, you know, this this level here takes three years to get to that bottom before you just annihilate out of here. So if you do, I mean, here's the point. Here's the point that I'm trying to make. Look at this measurement here from top to bottom. I'm measuring the same measurement that I'm just doing here on the NASDAQ, right? Do you, you see my implication? And look how this, look how Apple just, just busted through this like it's nothing. Like, I don't even know how to measure this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally don't know how you got to the conclusion of Apple just going this far based on Fibonacci's, right? Like, Fibonacci doesn't tell me anything about how we got here. I don't know how we got here. I would guess it has to do more with fundamentals, right? Fundamentals, like all the free money printing. How much money was laundered through buying shares of Apple? Almost all of it or something. You know what I mean? Like, that's my point. Like, they just print money and they put it in these stocks and this is why this happens, right? So, that's just one example of a stock traded on the NASDAQ that's showing us, you know, sometimes these Fibonacci measurements, even the extreme 0236 top to bottom measurement doesn't tell us the whole story, right? It doesn't. So, so what does that mean for our NASDAQ wave count here? That it's more likely headed over here before a wave four correction. Now all my bad news just turned into the greatest news of your entire freaking life, right? Because now you realize that wave four in all likelihood hasn't begun yet. In all likelihood, hasn't begun yet. And not only has it not begun yet, oh man, dude, you have a chance to sell the top of wave three, watch the crash down to wave four, or short it, buy all the shares short with all your free money that you made at the top of wave three, on the 1.618, the golden level, you know, look up all your Fibonacci 1.618, everybody knows, everybody knows, go do your homeworks. This is the most likely level to re- to, to hit if we're doing this measurement, and why are we doing this measurement? Because we're looking at Apple and we realize we can do this measurement. Do I need to give you another corroboration? Sure, I'll give you one. This is NASDAQ 101, folks. <laughs> this is NASDAQ 101. What the freaking hell is going on with Microsoft? This is a free money volcano. Yeah, lo- you know, you can... You can look at this on exponential scale. We never talk too much about this, but log scale. I generally look at things on log scale. But just to make an example of, uh, you know, Microsoft, what the hell is going on with this thing? The other major NASDAQ stock trade goes back even, you know, 1987. It's the same kind of setup, right? What do you got? What do we got going here? Do we literally just have something so basic that it's just so basic? One... To please somebody jump out at me and correct me if I'm wrong here. But where do we think that? How do we know the level of that wave three? Let's try to do Fibonacci's to see. Well, that sure doesn't tell you anything. What the hell's going? What? And then so go here. And then it's like, oh, up oh, my exact point, right? The exact point that I was trying to make. Where did Microsoft reach out to? It reached out to the 1.618 based on this measurement, at the top of the tech bubble to the bottom before it started this giant wave three. Where did it hit up to the 1.618? What am I trying to tell you about the NASDAQ, dude? I just, it's probably going to the 1.618 Fibonacci level to complete wave three, which means that all the bearish scaries of all this market nightmares and stuff, I just made the argument based on the NASDAQ that you not only have the top of wave three coming, you have the top of wave five coming. That is a lot of money to be made in this period of time. Do you see? Like, And the thing is, is like, how could this all happen? You know, what is this based on? You know, fundamentally speaking, well, fundamentally it's based on they're going to, you know, there's lots of free money still floating around in the atmosphere. Don't forget, you know, there's so many ways they give out this free money. Part of the free money giveaways are grants, artist grants, 
dude, it's a huge business. I mean, or a racket or whatever you want to call it. I'm in Canada, and uh, yeah, I just been noticing. Okay, that's a whole thing. Um, but uh, bottom line is, they got many, 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 many ways to print money and launder it. Student loans. Um, just bailing out insurance companies, you know, literally buying shares on the stock market, literally all these things. Don't you see? There's all these ways to hide all the freshly printed money. So we don't have any I freaking idea how much money there is, but it allows us to use these Fibonacci's conservatively and find different corroboration points for the correct measurements to be respected and then use our wave patterns to see, you know, when will we hit these Fibonacci's approximately? You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying that if if this whole wave right here is a five-wave move, right? The bottom of wave two, the top of wave three, right? If that whole thing is a five-wave move, then where the frick are you in it? Let's try to find out that basic. One, two, three, right? This is what we've talked about on the Dow Jones, right? Right? You're in wave four down. Where do you think you're most likely to retrace down to? The 70 freaking two. And then where do you go? You you do exactly what we've always talked about. You know what? I, does it all... Please comment below if I'm confusing you. This is kindergarten 101. These are the essential basics of all understanding if you want to make sure that you're not a victim of this weird inflation thing that they've going on. Because this weird inflation thing works both ways. Yeah, the price of everything is going to go up. But as we've seen, these markets, if you play them properly, I think you beat inflation considerably here. I mean, inflation's running fast. You know, the, the, the tidal wave of inflation is growing and growing and moving with more velocity. That's for sure. But look at this. If you bought one share on the NASDAQ in 87 and you're up here, I mean, good God, Lord, did you beat inflation? Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. You turn $200 into almost $20,000. So, yeah, you beat inflation. So, that's the kind of things we're talking about here. And all the other things, you know, all the other assets, you know, like cryptos, are basically a leverage play on those movements, right? So, the NASDAQ moves an absurd freaking amount. And now you've got cryptos. You've got cryptos backing the NASDAQ. They're literally... What are the... What are what is Apple holding? What is Microsoft holding? What is Tesla holding? They're freaking holding crypto coins, right? It's not like they're necessarily like talking about it all the time. You know, I don't know if Apple's really talked much about or publicly disclosed blah blah blah. But the point is, is every like employee of Apple, you know, all the people who are getting paid by Apple, everybody's getting paid by Microsoft. They're buying the dips right now the way that the money is flowing, right? Like these companies who pay their employees in shares of their companies, right? Microsoft pays their employees in shares of Microsoft. You know, Facebook pays their employees in blah, 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 right? And and while well, Facebook just got, you know, is getting hammered, but it doesn't matter. These guys who've been working there for five years, they're, they see the price drop and they're like, oh yeah, I'll just sell, you know, and make 10X instead of 11X, which I would have made if I waited. To, you know what I'm saying? Like these guys are so up on these stocks, like it's nothing to them to sell, but they're going to keep getting paid in more shares of these stocks because, you know, the heads of these companies, whoever they are, you know, like Zuckerberg and, and, and Bezos and these guys, they're taking the free money for the, from the government and putting it back into their stock. And then the employees are selling the stock because it's, it's moving up. And that's just one of those mechanisms of that money laundering thing. But it, you see how the money is flowing into these markets and it aligns with these Fibonacci projections and also our wave counts. Like we have to talk about, you know, how does this fundamentally occur? So the employees of Microsoft and Apple are getting paid in shares of Microsoft and Apple. They see cryptos down. You know, they're probably paying attention to the nature of these markets on some level, and they're just straight up dollar cost averaging into these things. And you can see how this is ultimately going to lead to the NASDAQ pumping a significant amount higher. And also for that reason, crypto is going to pump a significant amount higher. So now we have to re-examine, we have to re-examine what's going on here, right? Like something is... You know, it didn't retrace 702. You know, what the hell's going on? Well, basically, it's not too complicated to try to make sense of. It's just the way fractals work, right? So this is why you need to have conviction no matter what. Because every wave count you ever have can just get 
annihilated and, and turn into a joke, right? Don't even care about that. So here's here's what's more interesting to me that's going on right now. If this setup is an ABC correction and this B didn't even hit up 702, you might have like a bigger bottoming situation coming with Bitcoin, which could imply actually, you know, a significant more, you know, maybe potentially. I know, I know, I hate to say potentially a new all time high on Bitcoin. Now I'm, oh, I'm stepping out of line. Oh, changing my thesis. Well, I'm changing my thesis because we didn't get really a 702 retracement. And now it looks like you're setting up for an ABC correction. And let's talk about where could that ABC correction end up? Well, if we invert the scales and we do our basic Fibonacci's, where do you think this this retrace is taking us up to? I mean, these are the basic levels you would look at, right? You got inverse Fibonacci's, right? Where are you headed? So this C probably would end here, right? Inverted ABC correction. What Fibonacci levels could it respect? How many times? We keep talking about the 1.618. That is the golden level of Fibonacci mastery. It's the one that has the most gravity of all these local levels. That's what we're saying about, you know, why would the NASDAQ, where's the NASDAQ potentially headed? Well, I think it's, that that would seem like the most likely level. And then, of course, you would expect a correction after that level. We talked about whether that ZRX had the same exact setup. You know, you know, ZRX did a one a perfect 1.618 retrace on this move right here. Perfect 1.618 retrace. Just, you know, like look at the micros, look at the macros. I'm just pointing out like what where do these levels show up? Where do I see them? I see them all the time on all the different time frames, right? So Yes, this is my this is my argument, you know, and I'm starting to develop my own thesis here where this is st sort of where I'm starting to see, you know, the confluence. I'm starting to see the confluence of the Nasdaqs and the cryptos and the obvious understanding that the Nasdaq is essentially backed by crypto in many different dimensions. One of those dimensions being the fact that employees of Microsoft and Apple who are getting paid in shares of companies that are traded on the Nasdaq are investing their money into cryptos and not just other stocks on the NASDAQ, right? Because they know the upside of cryptos. You know, they, they see that cryptos is basically a leveraged play on the NASDAQ. That's the basic understanding of all of this. It's, it's a leveraged play on the NASDAQ. So you got to use the NASDAQ as your macro fundamental argument. You have to make sense of what's going on here to see what you could do with Bitcoin. So I have to say, on this downtrend situation, I think you're really freaking close, right? You're at the 1.618. Like, is are you, maybe you're going to come down to play around with it a little bit more, and we get all massive buying opportunities at that point. But that's probably your, your end of your C correction, I would think. And then, now it gets, you know, like, holy crap, what happens after this, you know, C correction? Well... You're, you gotta, you can see, right? You're gonna complete like a basically a W type. Well, this is an M, right? Right? Something like this. And where is this point gonna go to, right? We don't know. We don't know. We can be conservative and maybe think it's gonna go like that or something like that. That's more conservative. But we know these deep crabs. We've talked about the deep crab. What happens to the deep crab? It reaches deep. You know what I'm saying? Like these, these trends off these perfectly completed ABC corrections, they reach deep, right? So this is like all upside is what I'm saying, right? You see this this leg is an upside leg. And why why am I suddenly becoming more bullish about that Bitcoin situation? Because of what I'm talking about with the NASDAQ. I'm very bullish on the NASDAQ. I'm not like going to buy NASDAQ shares. I'm going to buy the leverage plays on NASDAQ like cryptos, obviously. But I'm just saying like, wow, in my view, I see a lot of reason to be bullish on the tech sector based on a technical, you know, a chart technical analysis, but also a fundamental analysis about the way that money is moving and who has all the money. Who has all the money? It's the tech giants. They have all the money. And so they're going to pump it into the stock market when the stock market prices get to a level where their lips are licking enough. And I would say that we're freaking just about there. I really would because the, the the fear is like you don't get too much more fear than this where it's like literally everybody agrees it's like we're done it's over like all like I I feel like most people are really confused about 
all this stuff about like where are we what does this mean what does this imply i just showed you what i think all it means and what it all implies and it's extremely bullish in the original thesis of the entire white knuckle report since the beginning is still exactly intact like it's always been that's the you know what i mean and and it's all just because at the end of the day this is the most logical situation I have for you on the NASDAQ. At the end of the friggin' day, this is what's this is what's makes the most sense to me. So bulls, like literally get the bull horns out, dude, and start like loading the frig up down here. And whatever that means for you, you know, like get that money so that like this is a buying opportunity of a friggin' lifetime, right? And it looks like, and the crazy part is, looks like you might get another lifetime buying opportunity at the bottom of that wave four before we have the completed five wave move cycle of the NASDAQ. And you know what? Like, I'm still being kind of conservative on these wave counts here because of what Fibonacci is implying. So, I mean, it's just like everybody's scared. Everybody's worried about everything going on. Oh, my Luna is like, it's like, I'm going to keep buying more Luna for all the reasons I just told you. I mean, Luna is like the highest leverage play on this entire macro environment. You see what I mean by that, right? Like the Fibonacci levels that Luna has to respect. Let's just take a quick look. I'm straight up talking about 702 retracements on Luna and it seems like a joke, but it's not a joke. This is not a joke. Like the, the log scale and exponential scale is like the friggin' same. You can't even, you can't even see this. Yeah, this is, I mean, I'm not even saying it's going to go that high. I'm not even saying that. But I'm saying that, like, the Fibonacci gravity is taking you on some pretty absurd multiples. That's all I'm saying, the Fibonacci. So, yes, I'm accumulating and lowering my average price down here. This is this doesn't scare me. I don't care if I, I literally, if Luna goes all the way to, how much, I will keep buying, right? Because it's just so basic, right? It's so freaking basic and the only way that you can have this basic thesis you know where you believe in your own thesis is when you can look at this macro environment and you can organize it in fibonacci's and wave counts and you can like i can convince myself and it's not even hard so if if i haven't convinced you i mean i guess that doesn't really matter i was actually thinking about that this morning i was like i do white knuckle report to convince myself you know <laughs> And it's so convincing right now. So, yeah, like look how much wiggle room and volatility you have on the NASDAQ down here. We're at a 702 downside retrace. It could be whatever, blah, 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 load up, go get money, get money, buy, buy, buy. I'm talking about buying these. I'm talking about look at look at perfect new cipher 702 retrace. It's a freaking 10x from here. On the 702 retrace, it's this 10x. And, I, and I'm already... I, like new cipher of course it's just so like the opportunity is so obvious so good dude in the eye of the shit storm you got to behold that beauty right it's what it's all about though so good dude in the eye of the shit storm i behold